Hi class, so we had a request for tearing down a cell phone, which I'm going to get to in just a minute. But I wanted to come back to our student laptop motherboard, and I wanted to point out one chip that I didn't mention before. And that's this little chip right here. This chip is part of what's called the ROM, R-O-M. It's a little different than RAM. The ROM is also memory, but it's a read-only memory. And it's a memory that helps us launch the computer so that it can actually get running into the operating system. And the operating system is the software that runs all of the different parts of this computer and help it talk to each other. Yes, we have these components that talk to each other, but they need kind of a common language in order to speak to each other. And that's what the operating system helps us do. It helps us communicate between all of these uh, pieces of hardware. The read-only memory gets things going. It's the jump start when the computer uh, first turns on and gives it its first set of instructions in order for all of these pieces to start talking to each other, which gets our operating system running. And once our operating system is running, then we're going to be able to run our applications and our software uh, to do the things that we need to do. But this right here, this little guy is too small to put a label on. He's the ROM chip. Okay, let's get to a cell phone teardown. Here is our cell phone. This is an old iPhone 6S. This is actually my old personal phone. And I've torn it apart before, but we're going to see how much smaller the inside of a phone is. So there's a couple little screws here I've already taken out, and you pop off the screen. And this is what the inside of the phone looks like when you first pull it apart. So I'm going to identify some of these parts and start to uh, show you what they do. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to very gently and carefully pull the ribbon cables for the screen off. So you see all these, these tiny little cables, super, super, super tiny connectors, are what give the information to and from the touchscreen. And touchscreens are really interesting. We talked about how monitors are output devices. Well, touchscreens are input and output devices. They have to be able to take inputs from your presses and moves and swipes and pinches uh, and all the different things that you can do. Uh, the fingerprint sensor here is an input and all of that information goes through these tiny little pins here at the top. Here you can see the back of the selfie camera that's sitting in there and I'll pull out the other camera um, in a bit. All of that information fits into this teeny tiny very thinly sandwiched a piece of glass here and the newer iPhones are even thinner pieces of glass all laminated together really cool and amazing technology so this is the inside this is the belly of the beast this big black part here uh, lithium ion that is the battery up here at the top we have the camera so all the cameras in iPhones and all of your cell phones are just these tiny little modules that sit right here it has its own little ribbon connector and that's the camera right there. That's all it is. This little guy uh, is able to shoot really high definition video and take great pictures all in that tiny, tiny little thing, smaller than a fingernail. So I've also taken off and um, some of the, the heat shield parts here and the, the heat sinks. So I'm going to take out the motherboard, actually. I've already done this disconnect some of the battery things and there's usually tons of screws and other things I've already gotten most of those out oh we got to get the sim card out here hold on I got to get my little tool so in order to get this out we got to punch out the sim card tray so there's a sim card tray that's the uh, digital authentication that you're uh, cell phone provider uses to make sure you can get on the network and then we can take off these shields those are usually soldered on and I'll take the motherboard out give me a second here there we go there is the motherboard so we went from a giant motherboard it's not even really gonna fit on camera in this zoomed in mode here's the giant motherboard to your student laptop and all the way down to a cell phone motherboard right here. This little black box, you can might be able to make out the lettering says A8. This is the, the CPU. 
And the CPU in Apple computers, or Apple um, iPhones, I should say, they actually contain the RAM as well. So the RAM is also built into uh, this chip. So this has a dual core, two cores, two processing cores uh, in this chip. It has the RAM, one gigabyte of RAM, all stored inside that chip. To give you some reference, this has this chip right here has about the same computing power and capacity as this computer here. I believe this uh, comes with two gigabytes of RAM, so these two RAM chips, and is about the same, a little bit less processing power in this CPU compared to the CPU in your student laptops, but fairly comparable. Let's talk about some of the other chips. This down here, all of this section right here, this is the NIC. This is the network interface card. Now, it doesn't seem all that much smaller than a student laptop. It, let me see if I can find my NIC. There it is. So this is the NIC from the student laptop. And one of the reasons that this is still so big is that it has to be able to work on cell phone towers. And cell phone interfaces and the antennas and the radio waves and all the things that have to be handled compared to Wi-Fi is much more difficult. So it's a lot harder. There's actually a lot more going on in here, which is why it's still about the same. The SSD. So this is the storage right here. On this uh, phone, I believe it was a 32 gig model, if I remember correctly. So it's about the same as the student laptop, a little bit bigger, but this is an old phone. It's, uh, what, six or seven years old at this point. So uh, not too bad in its uh, density. This model could take up to 128 gigs. So it was uh, pretty good. You could fit that 128 gigs in the same size on these phones. Down here we have some accelerometer and other management uh, for you taking user inputs uh, and other things under here is power supply management. And you'll see there's this, still this heat sink. I left that on there so you can see these are actually soldered on. I had to de, uh, really pull those off. We have this teeny tiny little cable. You might not be able to see it. That's part of the antenna that runs from the uh, NIC on the other side of this board and runs up to the top and connects through these pins up here. And on the top of the cell phone, this little uh, cutout here, this is part of the antenna for the uh, phone. Actually, it might be this one. I think it's this part. This top part is the cutout for the antenna. So that's how it's able to communicate with the cell phone towers is through there. A couple other notable points. This big guy right here, this little piece right here, this is the uh, that's the speaker. So this is how we get the sound out. Uh, lots of space and lots of room dedicated for uh, the speaker. iPhones are known for their good sound and that's part of it. This little guy right here, this is the uh, vibration engine. So this creates the vibrations uh, in the phone when your phone buzzes or you, you click on something and it, it gives you a little buzz. This is what's doing all of that. Uh, this is the old headphone jack. This is an old iPhone 6, the last iPhone to have a headphone jack. So it had that squeezed in there in the bottom corner. And that's most of the components, the major components anyways, of the inside of an iPhone and how they compare to your student laptops. Okay, I hope that uh, satisfies some of your curiosity. If you have other questions, always reach out to me.